Hello everyone, my name is Junkie Hode, and once again today we are going to be playing the Banner Saga. And as always, link down in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. Alright, so, last time we left off we were with Rook's group, and for some reason I couldn't rest up, so I went ahead and, off screen, I went ahead and rested up a little bit. I actually exited the game, this is a completely new session for me, and so now... As you can see, everyone except uh, Ivor is fully healed. I think we can survive. I can't afford to uh, to uh, risk any more rations <laughs> because we are low on rations. Rations are really, really, really bad right now. So we're going to go ahead and leave. So at least I got that sorted out. Apparently, I, yeah, I don't know what was up with it not letting me uh, do what I needed to do. Ugh. Um, and at least you know our morale is great, all things considered, until I make the next uh, big mistake, which we all know I'm going to be making mistakes. It seems like this game centers around mistakes. Let's see. A group of men with broad shoulders and thick cloaks approach the caravan. They might be outlaws, you hear nearby. And the idea quickly ripples through the clansmen. You don't know they're outlaws. One of the strangers approached saying, We're not outlaws! And heightens your curiosity even more and suspicions. Uh, we've run out of food. Any help would be welcome. His hard eyes reveal nothing of his motivations. We can't... Uh, you consider how you want to approach this. Ask them how they came to be here. Fight with us and earn your food. Decline and help the stranger. Decline to help the strangers. Offer them a few days worth of supplies. Can't, can't, can't. Um, don't want to fight with them. Uh, offer no food, but inform them of the dredge. We can't spare any... <clears throat> We can't spare any food, you say, but I'll tell you this. Turn and run. The dredge behind us follow swiftly. The men exchange unsurprised looks before the leader says, We appreciate the warning, but it makes our need for food greater. Oh, crap. Decline. Because I have a feeling... This one we have to fight. This one... <sighs> we have no food to spare. You tell the stranger. The man gravely nods and understand, uh, understanding before raising a hand and dropping it. Arrow suddenly slides through the caravan and people scream, Fuck you people! In the commotion, they grab what they can and run. I told you I wouldn't make the wrong choices! I tried to be nice. Okay, I need to stop being nice. I'm trying to be nice. I'm being too nice. And after patching up the wounded, you have nothing to show for but less food and some dead clansmen because that's exactly what we fucking needed right now because we didn't have enough supplies as it is and I'm about to cough. <coughs> ah. My throat is extra scratchy today. All right. Let's see. My oh, so many supplies. God. No! No! Man, we are so fucked. We are so fucked. Uh, please? Oh, it's, it's, it's only a godstone. I bet you have no supplies for us, don't ya? You find a surprising number of people camped out at the Godstone. They've been here quite a while, ever since the sun stopped. Apparently, they think uh, Redemur, the sun god, has come back, and they're worshipping him despite the bleak environment. They welcome the caravan, mingling and swapping stories with the others while you rest. They have almost nothing of value to trade, but their leader approaches and offers to let you join in their tribute. Ask what the tribute involves. Gunfria, one says, showing you a gold and liquid in a silver bowl. He places some on his chest, which almost sounds like it's sizzling, and explains through clenched teeth it's a gift from the sun god, an oil that burns like the sun and lets them see things clearly. 
Try it yourself. Bravely, you give the offer a chance. When you apply the oil to your skin, uh, the oil, your skin starts to burn like a hot brand, but you bear it. It doesn't reveal any secrets of the universe, but the worshippers are impressed by your courage and gift you mo more oil to take. All right, let's inspect the God Stone, because we might as well, and then move on. Nobody can really agree on what Radomir looked like. As fond as he was of his own isolation, he never directly contacted humanity. Most think he was a serpent that lived in the sun, and it's not uncommon, uncommon to hear speak of seeing the tail of a great creature slipping through the thin clouds on a sunny day. Radomir was always one of the lucky gods, the kind who people think for good weather, healthy livestock, and a good harvest. Despite all that, the biggest mystery has always been how his godstone came to be found at the bottom of a dried out lake. After some rest, you continue. The sun god worshippers are keen to stay, so you pack your things and return to the road. Ah, so we got Golun of Fear. And we continue on with no additional fucking supplies. We, we are... Oh, we are so screwed. We are so screwed. Day of supplies. Gone. Morale declined. I wonder why. We lost three fighters, four clansmen. Several people have noticed black vultures circling about the caravan, taking advantage of the light snowfall. They pose no threat, but they have a visible impact on the mood of the clansmen. The next time you look back, Udleaf is firing arrows into the air, which nearly tagged the birds once or twice. Get lost! No dead down here! She. <laughs> I beg to differ. <laughs> because I suck as a leader, there's probably going to be plenty of dead down here. She s shouts to nobody in particular. <sighs> Join her in shooting the vultures. First person to knock one out of the sky gets their wish granted, you announce. Several of the caravan give it a try, including Alette, enjoying the sport and turning around morale. It's no big surprise when one of Old Leaf's blue feather arrows brings down a bird. Please be a supply. Please be considered a supply. I need it to be considered a supply, please. Ah. Uh, you know, says Old Leaf, scanning the caravan, a lot of the women... They could do this. You can tell from the look in her eyes she's excited about the idea. I think I'm going to start training them on how to fight, she says. Encourage Old Leaf to train the women. We need We need everyone involved in this. We can always we can always use more fighters. You tell Old Leaf. If a lead is any proof, you know how to train someone with a bow. Old Leaf Old Leaf Gives you a smile. She heads off to some of the women in the caravan, showing them the vulture she shot down. No, it did not count as a fucking supply. Damn it! Gosh darn it! <sighs> Morale decline. Minus three more fighters and minus eight clansmen. Harsh words from one mother to another draw the attention of the entire clan. My... My daughter marries Ragni, and no, or no one. The reed thin tramp you call a daughter won't provide sons. The insulted mother bares her teeth, ready to attack. Do we let the argument play out on its own? Uh, worry on marriage another time. The two women look embarrassed, which turns to anger. You worry about your fighting, and I'll worry about my daughters. Both women glare at you before stomping, storming off. Well, piss off then. This isn't the time to be bickering about... Try, uh, honestly, chances are, with <laughs> the way things are going, there's not going to be anyone to marry anyone. We should rest. Oh, uh, but we can't rest. We don't have any supplies. We have no fucking supplies. Um... A well-tended farm with plenty of life rock draws the caravan's attention. Upon your arrival, the farmer and his workers stand defensively within plain sight. Crude weapons, weapons at the ready. Their crossed arms make their thoughts clear without word. <sighs> God. 
Come with us. It's not safe here. Uh, you warn the farmers of the approaching dredge, but the man spits and says, This land is my life. I lose that. May as well be dead. The farm hands slowly nod their agreement. <laughs> don't want to. I don't want to take the livestock by force. I don't. I don't, but we need the supplies. Otherwise, we're going to die. Fuck. Fuck. Oh. Your warriors step forward, unsheathing weapons and practically growling. The farmer's men blanch and step aside as you choose the hardiest beasts. The farmer has the sense to say nothing, though the expression on his face stays with you for quite a while. Even after you are away, you catch a glance of Alette who stares at her feet and does not make eye contact with you. I'm sorry! Oh. Okay, we, we need to... We have to break for camp. We have to. Uh, fuck! I didn't want to have to have done that! Game! I get technically I didn't have to, but we would have died and we Wormtoe was never the kind of place. And we were so close to Wormtoe. Fittingly, the Var living here aren't known for welcoming visitors with open arms. The Var will find you before you see them. Not surprising with this many people behind you. With weapons drawn, they demand to know why you're here, but back down when Ivor tells them he's come to see someone named Crummer. Krumar. Crum... Krummer? Crummer. Ooh! You look like a badass. <laughs> I don't want to fight you. Please tell me we don't have to fight him. Well, I be damned. Krummer, it's been a long time. Yeah, it has. So what brings Yev Yevnar to Wimda? With his very own village of humans. Bad news. Zredge are coming down from the north. We barely, ma barely made it this far. Uh, that is dire news. Come on, we have food. We'll discuss more in the meat house. As you follow the old Varl into the meager town, you catch him quietly saying, If it were anyone else... I guess he doesn't really like our presence. <laughs> I've talked with the warriors here. I'll be honest with you. I half want to go north and find out what happened to Boltzbockler. Some think we should go to Grafenheim and say, No, you do not want to go to Grafenheim. <laughs> Grafenheim is probably more fucked than we are right now. None of them are happy you're here. What do you think? If I had it my way, I'd stay here and let the dredge come. But you made this a problem, didn't you? We can't feed this many people for long, even if they don't eat much. This is a vile town. Most of us take care of ourselves. You've got women and children. We could pitch in. Make this place livable. It doesn't work like that. The Val are here to get away from civilization, not make one. It's Krum, it's Krummer's call. It won't be long before the dredge are here, too. No, it won't. If there's one thing we should do, it's tell John Dinner what's going on. Who's Jorunder? Val King. Well, as close to one as we have. In, in, in Gvar, where'd you find these people? Stay here and rest, but once you once yours are ready to go, we do. But once your yours are ready to go, we do. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. I'm going to see off those who want to head north. But I'll join you to Grothheim. More travel? No. We've already come so far. Stop. The pouting girlie, 
Even if John Near won't listen to a tired old bar like me, I have a feeling they'll pay attention to your friend uh, Ingvar here. They'll listen to Ivor? Ha! <laughs> he hasn't told you. Of course he hasn't. Do what you need to, but don't be long. I'm guessing he, Ivor is going to be uh, Jungdur's son or something like that. So I guess a prince. Well, let's 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 talk to uh, Krummer. Krummer, can you spare a moment? Mostly no, but I'll try. I never had a moment to thank you for your hospitality. Consider it done, then. How did you get all these Farl to follow you? Respect, young one. After uh, the Second Great War, wasn't much for me left to do, so I started training other Varl to fight. Got tired of that, made a place in Wormtoe. They still come calling, even with no wars to speak of. Seems like that might be changing, though, don't it? Who's Ingvar? Ha! <laughs> I'm not surprised he never told you. I'm just surprised he can stand being around anyone at all. Your friend was one of us long ago. I mean, the dredge-bashing type. He was called Ingvar, then. And if you want to know why he changed his name, best ask him yourself. I'm too old to peddle in gossip. No, that seems to be the ones who battle the most in gossip and the best in gossip. <laughs> you want some? You want some good gossip? Go to go to some old people. They they, I mean they 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 got it for you. <laughs> they got it for you. <clears throat> bet you have. I bet you have some incredible stories. I might. I might. Or I could be the most boring vol you ever met. Depends on how much you like Gil and Dredge. Well, at the moment. Stories about killing Dredge sound pretty good. Ask me again someday. Might tell you about the time we filled a dead yox with a w with whale teeth. <laughs> that actually does sound interesting. Why the fuck did you do that? And why? Okay. A at least you'll also explain and why. I I'm I'm cool with that then. <laughs> <clears throat> Any wisdom on fighting Dredge? Depend on how mu depends on how much you know. They're all armor. Tap them hard enough, though, and it'll shatter. Line up a whole roll of slag, and they'll explode on each other all the way down. You get in a big brawl, half your time is spent setting them up for it. And if you see one bang his axe like a tuning fork, try to kill him quick. I already figured that one out. Sometimes the slag he's calling won't even show up. I best leave you to your business. I suppose you should. Take care, friend of Ingvar. All right, let's see. Ooh, market, 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 market. Yeah, we will sell all of our renown essentially because we need the fucking supplies. Oh, I hate doing that. Oh, I hate doing that. But damn if we don't need it. Ugh. Ugh. But we have supplies. And we can rest up here real quick to improve our morale. I could probably risk one more. Okay, good. We're we're in good. We're good. We're good. We're fine. We're doing great. We're doing wonderful. And that's where we're going to leave it off today. No battles. We didn't have any battles today. I'm fine with that. We had a lot of ch tough choices, though. Man, we had a lot of tough choices. And I'm guessing this also means that Krummer has uh, joined our ranks. I'm not entirely sure if that is the case. Yep. Krummer. Krummer. Has joined our ranks. <laughs> so yeah. So if you enjoyed. Don't forget to hit that like button down below. And leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about the choices. The, I hate this game. I love this game so far. But I also hate this game. And not because it's it's not a bad game. Not at all. 
from what I've seen of it so far, not a bad game. It just, it puts you in these situations to make choices you don't want to make. You don't, you want to take the high roll road as much as possible. I mean, unless, I mean, unless you're someone who doesn't, which I mean, granted, there might be people out there like that. In fact, there are people out there like that or people who know how to make those tough choices. I'm not one of them. I want to try to, you know, appease everyone. But in this game, it's you can't appease everyone. There are going to be per people hurt. There, I shouldn't do that. Shouldn't bang my fist on the desk. But there are going to be people that you piss off. There are going to be people who you can't reason with. There are going to be encounters that you just can't avoid. And I need to stop. Just I need to stop trying to be the nice guy. Or yeah, trying to be what I consider to be the nice guy all the time, because it's just not going to work. And I hate to say it, it's not going to work. It can't work. Like what I did with those farmers, I am so sorry. <laughs> I am so sorry. Uh, but yeah, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Daily uploads 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every day. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!